If you've seen any of my recent videos, then you'll know that Lotro has become a staple in my gaming catalogue. In fact, it's quite literally the only game that I play right now. And as a fairly new player to Lord of the Rings Online, I found myself along the journey so far asking, why? Why aren't other people playing this game to the extent that I am? Why aren't there loads and abundance of new players running around experiencing the game just like I am? Why has a game with such a solid foundation and so many years experience not attracted a much wider audience? Can't be because the game is simply bad or it wouldn't have survived this long. So then I got to thinking, as a new player, what were the things that struck me that I had to push past to really start enjoying Lotro? Things that, had I not been as invested as I was at the time, would turn me away to another competitor? What would ultimately snuff out the flame of excitement and not allow me to continue to enjoy this beautiful experience? And so it is, here we start, my friends. I present to you my opinion on the glaring issues that would ultimately create a barrier to entry for newer players. Before we start, if you do enjoy this video and this style of content, then feel free to leave a like, subscribe if you're new here, and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when the video is available to you. Without further ado, let's get right into it. I guess it's only fair to start at the precipice of the new player repellent when it comes to Lotro, and unfortunately, that has to be the graphics. Graphics are, of course, somewhat subjective these days, and they don't always make for a good gameplay experience that we know, but as humans, we are sold on sight. And if the game you're playing has a face for radio, then that's only going to end in tears. All jokes aside, I personally think that the graphics of Lotro have a certain charm to them and they're by no means bad. In fact, some areas in the game have you stopping to stare at them whilst you forget what you're actually doing in the first place. However, it is no surprise that the game looks dated by modern day standards, even after some of the graphical reworks on some of the older areas to bring them up to par with newer content. When compared to the likes of New World, for example, the cracks do really start to show. Before you start shaking your fists, I actually despise New World, but I can't deny the graphical integrity of the game is impressive and it certainly set a benchmark for modern day MMOs. For a game like Lord of the Rings Online that released in April 2007. If you're a fan of the franchise, then ultimately you can cut it some slack for how far ultimately it's come in that time. But as a newer player, I don't really feel like you'll be letting the game off that easily. Next up, it's only fair to bring up the one thing that makes an MMO amazing or ultimately downright shit, uh, and that is the combat. I want to preface this statement by saying that I actually thoroughly enjoy the combat experience in Lotro, and it only gets better with progression, but ultimately we have to bear in mind here that we are in the mind of someone brand new, with no preconceptions of what's to come. The initial thoughts of combat is that it ultimately seems a bit slow. So very slow. Especially if you go down the route of a yellow champion, for example, which was my first class. I've come from a background of Final Fantasy XIV, which I'm sure you're all very bored of me saying, and ultimately that seems a lot faster, more natural, and a lot more responsive, until I got used to the combat system in Lotro. The combat system could definitely use a tweak here and there in certain situations, where you, for example where you press a key, and often it feels like it doesn't register that command instantaneously. The truth is that it has registered the action, but it does go into a queue, uh, and a couple that with the character animation, it can all seem a little bit forced and janky. Once you've played for a few hours, you'll notice the combat actually has a real charm to it, and it's actually quite nice to play an MMO with a slower paced style, rather than the usual bright AoE spams just to burn down a pack of mobs. One of my biggest gripes initially that I've now come to love is the map of Lord of the Rings Online. This map, whilst gorgeously presented in the form of its artwork, appears to be as much use as a chocolate fire guard when you're new. You can zoom out with a right click, you can click on certain zones to ultimately zoom in, but in terms of interaction, that is, that's largely it. Yeah, there's no scroll wheel functions or options to really zoom up close if you're looking for something near you. Seriously, the amount of times I've struggled to find an NPC or a camp entrance 
because the map felt so fucking useless is unreal. You can't, for the most part, even hover your mouse over the quest locations to work out which quest marker belongs to what quest. So as a new player, if you get more than two quests at a time, it can really feel quite jarring to work your way around in a world that ultimately leaves you blinded. Travel in the early game needs to be said that it can feel like a chore depending on who you are, what class you play, and how you like to enjoy your MMOs. If you're inclined to want to take in the world around you and soak up the glory of Middle-earth, then this won't affect you as a new player at all. But if you're used to teleportation crystals and flying mounts, then you're ultimately in for a shock. The closest systems you're going to have to fast travel early on are in the forms of stable masters and the milestones which are dotted around the map. Stable masters, for the most part, can only be used if you have discovered the area which you're actually looking to go to. Or on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you're willing to buy mithril coins with Lotro points, which is Lotro's in-game currency. Outside of that, you can unlock a mount for requesting early on, but this is definitely one of, if not the slowest mounts I've had access to early on in any MMO. The early game horse has an abysmally low 100 hit points and you get knocked off of it just about as much as you mount it. Couple that with the travel speed of 62% and you are very much ready for a very steady, steady journey to say the least. If however you can, like me, look past these early game systems and focus on the world around you and the storytelling and the lore, then the slower traversal time will only add to your experience as there's so much good stuff to see. Whilst, of course, being largely free to play, and when I say free to play, Lotro, in my opinion, has one of the best free to play models in any MMO right now. It does, of course, have a subscription model in the form of VIP. But before you guys shake your fists and tell me that the VIP is an option to you, we have to bear in mind that new players are so used to falling for the typical free to play models that we have available to us now. What I mean by that is stereotypically, these offer you absolutely nothing and force you to ultimately pay to play. And with a game that is 16 years old, they may not feel that ultimately coupled with the graphics, the combat, that that is going to be a worthwhile investment. I also had a similar mentality when I first started, but I'm happy and surprised to say that the level of content in the free to play game is astounding and really, really worth checking out. You aren't held back on your level compared to those of which that have subscribed to the VIP option and your questing will take you up to about level 95 as it stands currently, which in fairness will keep you occupied for a very long time. Some of the drawbacks if you aren't a VIP are missing out on the likes of rested XP and being able to instantly check your mail just to name two of them, which once you get used to it's kind of hard to go without. But by no stretch of the imagination did I feel that when I was playing free to play I was missing out on a massive amount of content or that I was heavily restricted. Lastly, I do feel strongly that the sheer amount of content in Lord of the Rings Online can damage the potential and the amount of new players entering the game. This may sound a stupid statement as new content typically means the game remains alive, but it is also another movement of the preconcepted goalpost of a new player. When entering the game for the first time, you have no idea which quests amongst many you're supposed to take, and that can truly feel like a minefield in itself, leaving you in fear of missing out or going astray in the story, which I've done multiple times. With this much content available to me, should I be reading all of the quest text and listening to all of the cutscenes, or is it more like World of Warcraft where I can practically skip everything in existence? With all of the content available to me, what expansions will I need to buy? If I do get invested, are there enough players even still around to complete certain content? These are all questions that will go through the mind of a new player, as they also did in my own thoughts. With that said, this does bring us to the end of the video. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed kind of my insights, takes and opinions. And if you have any opinions of your own, then please do feel free to share them down below. Don't forget to leave a like for the algorithm gods and I will see you guys in the next one.